In this video tutorial, we're going to discuss the moment capacity calculation when base reinforcement is present and essentially how the user needs to uh, enter the cover requirements for the base reinforcement. And we're going to go ahead and take a look here at this model. And you can see in this model we have uh, two manual design cuts. I'll try to highlight those cuts for us. There's, there's a cut here and then there's a cut right there, really close to this wall. The face of this wall is here. And what happens is we have a step in a slab. There's actually a depression right there. This depression is minus 100 millimeters, so minus 100 there. But this design cut that we're going to look at here actually cuts through the, uh, I'll call it the regular slab versus the depressed slab. And I think the regular slab here is 275 millimeters. Um, just a little bit about the model. We have base reinforcement. So there's an entry of base reinforcement, 10 uh, millimeter bars at 250 millimeters on center. The cover from the bottom of the main slab, the 275 millimeter slab, is 25 millimeters in the x direction. There's the reference angle for x and y axes. And then 35 millimeters uh, for the y direction. So we have something that looks like like this. This is the x bar and then the y bar sits up here and this is 25. This distance is 35. Um, so that's how the base reinforcement in this location is set up. There's also some top reinforcement over here as well uh, in the model, but we're, we're looking at a, a section away from that location. So this particular model, uh, we're really only working with with manual design cuts. So I'm going to actually delete this this one cut, and we're going to focus only on this cut right near the face of wall. Uh, to, gener to generate a cut, we can always go to Floor Design and Create Manual Design section, and then the user can just place cuts at any location in the floor. So you're not required technically to use automated design section. It's a little easier uh, for the program to com compile reinforcement output and some results if you do use automatic sections, but it's not uh, critical. In addition to the reinforcement, and before we move on, let me go ahead and I'm going to actually take this mat, this uh, depressed slab, which is really nested inside of the main slab, and I'll take this one here. Okay, I'll select those three those three items and I'm going to right click and show and it looks like my base reinforcement turned off uh, that, that's not uh, that's okay we can always go to the display manager and I'll just turn the base reinforcement back on okay just just the all I want is the mesh reinforcement so I'll turn all of this off keep the mesh on and if we look at uh, side view we can see there's that depressed slab Here's that base reinforcement. So sometimes these views can help in just determining where the bars are in the slab. This is the other direction. There's the depressed slab right there. There's the main slab. There's a 100 millimeter depression. And then we have the bar right there. So you can use right click, show or hide selection. I'm not going to use show all. I'm actually going to go back to a top view and just use visibility default display. If you show all, it's going to show everything in the model, including elements, uh, shell elements, frame elements, if those were turned on prior. So that is a little too much. Here we just want to look at the structural components uh, in the model. So we have, we need to turn back on our manual design cut here. So I'll turn that back on. And I'm also going to turn on the tendons. So we have a few tendons in here intersecting this cut. There's a tendon right there, and there's a tendon right there. So if we go ahead and let's say we want to know what the capacity is of that of that section, I can just, the first thing I need to do is analyze the slab. Uh, I could just analyze for one combination. Here I just need that in order to uh, create the solution so that I can then proceed to investigate the design cut. Okay, and then I'll take this cut, I'll select it, go to floor design and just investigate the cut. And if you double click on that cut, there's two ways to show capacity. One is graphically. If we come over here to analysis 
wall, or excuse me, manual design uh, sections. We can look at the bending action on the cut. Um, we have the two extreme actions in the negative moment. There is actually negative 32.93. Let me just reduce the font size here to help us see that more clearly. Okay, and then I could also say, well, I really want to know what the moment capacity is. This shows me that there's a positive capacity of 192 and a negative capacity of negative 100. So that seems somewhat backwards. Um, we expect more negative capacity, but in, in investigation mode, it's a function of what reinforcement you have entered into the model. And here we have PT and the base rebar. So if we double click on this cut. We have a dialogue that will appear that shows us uh, a lot of information. And um, this information that we can see, we can see we, uh, actions, reinforcement that's calculated. Because we're investigating, we don't have any uh, calculated rebar. We don't have a stress check uh, in this case because we haven't designed the sections we've investigated. We're really looking at this information down on the bottom, the, the capacities, but also under design section, the disposition of the reinforcement in the um, in the section. And we can see that for that particular, let me go back to that, for that particular section, all of the rebar is down on the bottom, and then we have two tendons that are near the neutral axis, or let's say below it. So we have no real compression reinforcement, um, or, or excuse me, no no tension reinforcement at the top of the section, since this is at a at a support. So we're going to say, well, we need to add top reinforcement. Maybe we missed that in modeling this. We'll go back, and we're going to add top reinforcement. So I'll just go back to rebar, and I'm going to select distributed. And we're going to say this is going to be number 12s. Um, these are top bars. And I'm going to just select, let's say, the face of this, the face of this wall. I'll say I want the bars to go from there. And I'm going to stretch these bars out one and a half meters, maybe two to there. And then the extends, that defines the bar length. The extent is going to be, let's say, from here. And I'll just say all the way down to there. So we have, by default, the program will add actually only two bars, two 12 millimeter bars by 1500 millimeters long. And I actually want the spacing to be filled in between the range of, let's say, um, 150 millimeters. So I could go back to this. I could say, well, I want my spacing really to be 150. I want to turn off the fixed number of bars, and then I'll update. And now I have 64 bars in between that zone. So now I can go back. I've already run the analysis. I can just go back and uh, investigate the section again. And you'll notice one thing. I, I didn't really pay attention to the cover. Uh, I should have. Uh, I, the cover here is actually 25 from the top. That's 25 millimeters from the top of the first slab entered, which is actually this slab. So if we look at the design cut, we can see now that the, the negative capacity exceeds positive. However, when I distribute those bars over the width of the cut, there, there's actually a few of them outside of the slab that are kind of in this zone in the depression. And the rest of them are inside of the slab. So the program will basically sum up the area of all bars and just assume it's at some effective depth from the, from the um, compression side. Now, con conversely, if I take this and I say, well, I need to clear that depression for these bars. I really need to put in 125, 100 plus the 25 cover. And then I'll come back and investigate the sections again. In this case, this is too conservative uh, for this particular section because now all of the bars are down below, 25 millimeters below the lowest point, uh, which is that 100 millimeter depression. And we get again a situation where these bars are really near the, the centroid, or the, the excuse me, the neutral axis, and you get very little effect from those in terms of the of the uh, negative capacity. We still get negative capacity, but we're we're driving down, let's say, the lever arm internally, and we get a lower uh, capacity. Uh, so we get something like this: the positive capacity still outweighs the negative capacity. The only uh, other option that we have 
is to somehow adjust the bar. So I could say, well, I, I want those bars that are fully inside of that range to be extended. Let me turn the tendons off here. We'll say those bars are going to be extended from, from this point to here. And then I could also add additional bars just inside of this zone right here. And then I might have to add another range inside of the actual depression. So we're going to break this up into two, two unique groups. This bar is really short. I mean, this may or may not be realistic, but it shows the uh, functionality of what we're doing in the program. So I'll do that. I'll just say there's a bar like, like so, and it goes from here down to there. And that bar is going to be, again, um, we'll say it's 25 millimeters from the cover because this is the main 275 millimeter slab. They're going to be 12 millimeter bars. I'll fix the spacing at 150 again and then update that. So we have 14 bars in that zone. And again, I can go back and uh, investigate that design cut and obtain something that's probably more realistic. There's one bar sticking out there that I may have to move the extents there, but I think this is more realistic. If we look at the capacity now, their capacities are uh, close to equal, but negative far, you know, outweighs the positive just by having these bars up in the top um, you know, of the section. So this is a way to refine the placement of the base rebar. If you have any questions about this, please contact us at adapt support at risa.com. Thank you.